Coming up, it's that time of the semester again. Be prepared for long lines at Starbucks and more people in the library. It's finals week. This morning, we have a few tips to help you prepare. Now, from the EMC studio at Onondaga Community College. This is an On TV update. Good morning and welcome to On TV Update. This is Friday, May 1st. I'm Connor Halton. And I'm Elena Ciro. Finals week is quickly approaching and everybody knows how stressful that can be. There are a lot of... There are a lot of things to consider even before sitting down to study. Rebecca Gillette tells us how you can prepare to succeed on those upcoming tests. Finals week. Two words that send college students into a state of panic. Biology professor Olea Craddock says there are two things to keep in mind while preparing for finals. So, so I'd say anxiety management and just time management and feeling okay with not beating yourself up about where you are going into finals is probably one of the most important things. Pulling an all-nighter before a test is not unusual. For students like Josh Barrett, it's a good idea to set time aside strictly for sleeping. I try to get as much sleep as I possibly can. Um, I try to make sure I get at least a good seven to eight hours, um, especially if I'm really trying to study before a big test. I'll make sure I block out that time to at least get seven hours of sleep. According to the Washington Post, one of the biggest mistakes students make is wasting time on social media. So they recommend you disconnect from your internet and your phone to avoid the distraction. Disconnect from the outside world, set time for studying, and set time for sleeping. The next morning, you are prepared for that final exam. One, I would remember it's just exams. These things too shall pass, although it doesn't feel that way. Reporting from Culture Library, for On TV Update, I'm Rebecca Gillette. Final week starts May 12th and ends May 15th. Grab a partner, some coffee, and a quiet place to study to prepare for the challenges ahead. Planning to transfer after graduation? OCC's 2 plus 2 agreements are making that transition a lot smoother. The 2 plus 2 agreements are available for current OCC students planning on transferring to complete their bachelor's degree. After graduation with it, students apply to both schools at the same time, and after completing their two-year degree, they are guaranteed acceptance to the four-year college. Syracuse University, St. John Fisher, Lemoyne, and SUNY Oswego are among some of the schools participating. To make sure you're on track to transfer, schedule an advisement appointment today. The art of producing and mixing tracks has been made more efficient by digital audio. By the 1970s, digital became the standard and began to replace analog technology. But does this mean digital is better or just more convenient? A lot of work goes into producing the perfect song, whether it's mixing the levels, getting the right instruments, or even using the right effects. But there is no question analog recordings will give you a crisper sound. It has a life that virtual instruments just don't have because they're just digital samples of something. And yeah, they might be a, a, a really clean, high fidelity, awesome sounding sample, but it's, it's not going to be the real thing. I think to the trained ear, uh, yes, there is a distinct difference, and, and I would bet that most trained ears and most audio files and audio engineers could A, B it through a pair of speakers and tell you, oh no, that's the source of that is digital and the source of this is, is in fact um, analog. A song being produced can range from eight tracks to a hundred plus, which means it can take a little while to make the perfect mix. Most producers like Alex take real instruments and record them digitally to preserve sound quality. It's safe to say that digital tracks, if done in the right manner, can sound virtually as good as analog ones. Combining digital and analog, it allows you to save some cash while not totally giving up on the results. Um, and yeah, tons of great music is being made with with digital these days. From Studio Zoot in Cortland, I'm Zach George for On TV Update. Norway will be the first country to switch from FM radio to digital radio in 2017. As the end of the semester approaches, the members of JAMA here at OCC offer a few fun activities to help students enjoy the last few days before finals week. The students have something very exciting coming their way. 
on TV's Vanessa Satu shows us what students can expect. Okay. This May, Jemai will put on their third annual OCC fashion show. Auditions have already been held and the models have been chosen. Every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. you can find the models right here, practicing with club president Shakayla Johnson. Actually, um, it was a... Uh... Our fashion uh, fashion show coordinator, uh, Marissa, mm -hmm. uh, she actually came up with the idea of doing like a welcome to the jungle type of a theme, uh, something like it's in nature, especially when it's about to be summer and about to be hot. So she thought that would be a really good uh, feature for the show. The models have been hard at work walking and practicing for the show. For some, this will be their very first time walking the runway for OCC. The event will take place Friday, May 8th at Store Auditorium. To purchase tickets, students may go to the SRC Arena box office and get them there for $5. The show starts at 7 p.m. From the SRC Arena, I'm Vanessa Satu with your On TV Update. Some of the proceeds from the show will go to a charity of the club's choice, so by attending this event, you'll be entertained and supporting a good cause. Established in 1987, Feats of Clay was created to foster the education of ceramic arts within Syracuse high schools. Alexis Cabrera got a chance to meet some of the very important people that keep this event alive. Feats of Clay is celebrating its 28th birthday with some big changes, and I got a chance to speak with some of the people behind the scenes that are helping to push it forward. This year, Feats of Clay will be thrown back on the wheel of reinvention, and one of the original seven founders, Peter Valenti, wants to take us back in time to when it all started. Uh, there, there was a, a group of seven of us that met at Syracuse University uh, to plan a student show. And one of the gentlemen, Charlie Wallowitz uh, from Nottingham, had an idea for a competition and um, came up with some of the events right on the spot. And we decided that we would do it the following Saturday. And the rest, as they say, was history. Feats of Clay continue to evolve over the span of almost 30 years and today it prepares to take new form in the capable palms of Lindsay Scott. Um, I remember it from so long ago, so taking it over is kind of has this nostalgic feel, but also, um, you know, I'm very honored to be able to take it over and carry it on. And her mentor? Well, he can't think of anyone better suited to carry on the torch. She just seems like the natural progression, and I've been kind of teaching her the ways of feats of clay over the past three years, and it's, it's time for the next generation to take over. If you haven't had a chance to catch the feats of clay exhibit, you still have a small window. The doors close today at 4 p.m. With On TV Update, I'm Alexis Cabrera. Connor, back to you. Thanks, Alexis. You can meet some of the high school artists live and in person today as they compete in a series of ceramic relay races coined the Feats of Clay Olympics. The event will be held in front of Wahimney Hall today between 10 and 1. Coming up, we're going to have a look at outside to see if last week's snow is gone for good. Weather is next. Also, Larry Berg takes a look at a seasonal nuisance that could end up costing you big bucks at the mechanic. That's all when we come back. My experiences have been amazing. I love my professors. All of the students are super outgoing. We do things outside of class together, which is really great. We go to movies together. We go to lunch together. It's really fun. When you get along with the people that you go to school with, you do better at everything in your life. I am in the OCC nursing program. The faculty here always go above and beyond to help us learn what we're doing. I've been able to personally interact with every single one of the professors here. The lab spaces were recently renovated over the summer. Here you get clinical experience at a lot of different hospitals. I think the OCC program gives you a lot of opportunity to find out what you really like. Uh, it's been a good experience. I've had a lot of fun, did a lot of work, learned about a lot of new things. I learned about hardware, software, basically electronics and computers on a much grander scale involving both software and hardware. It's a good college. 
if you if you are in the technology department or in you're in the Whitney building, uh, I would say that's a good place. <laughs> They say nothing beats seeing something amazing for the first time. Whether it be a good book you read, or a song you heard, the Barnes & Noble bookstore would make sure to amaze you. Especially if it's your first time. Come visit us today. Visit our website, onadagacc.bncollege.com for more information. Welcome back to On TV Update. Well, Elena, it looked like winter wasn't done with us a, a week ago. That was so annoying. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's check in with Larry Berg, our weather reporter, to see if spring is finally here to stay. Good morning, Elena. Good morning, Connor. You know, today is the first day of May, which puts us about 51 days away from the summer solstice, which is how we determine our first day of summer. Let me tell you, we are right on track today with how things are building up for that change in season. But let's talk about today. Currently, it's about 61 degrees and beautiful sunshine. If you can see it out here, you'd be jealous that you're not outside. Today, it's going to be partly cloudy though. The clouds are gonna be building in later on, which also means partly sunny. So let's think positive here. There's a chance of a localized shower, so you may want an umbrella just in case. We will hit a high of about 66 or 67 degrees and we'll dip down into the low to mid 40s later on tonight. You may forgive the rain today once I tell you what's coming up because the five day forecast, courtesy of the Weather Channel, goes like this. Saturday and Sunday, both sunny, both in the low 70s. The last time we had two days of 70 degree weather back to back was the middle of last October, and this time on a weekend. Monday, we make a jump to a high of 79 degrees, but there is some moisture in that system that could give us a thunderstorm. A cold front will be moving through on Tuesday, giving us some rain and slightly cooler temperatures. Wednesday, we're back up into the low 70s with lots of sunshine, and I think that may carry over into Thursday as well. Some of you will remember the snowstorm on Mother's Day just five years ago, the first time that it happened since 1996. But I don't think that that's going to happen this year. Still, Mother's Day is May 10th, hint, hint, and a lot can happen in nine days. This is the season where you see all sorts of things coming up as the temperatures climb. Flowers, grass, buds on trees, and hopefully your school grades. But there is one thing in particular that is going down, potholes. Potholes are a fact of life. You see them almost everywhere. They seem to appear overnight. They're difficult to deal with, but Gene Salento with the New York State DOT understands them. Uh, a pothole happens when moisture starts penetrating through the pavement, freezes down below, expands, and when it eventually melts, it leaves behind this void. If the void gets big enough, the supporting asphalt up above may not be able to bridge that, mm -hmm. the, the span of that hole, and if that happens, it collapses and you get a pothole. There's an easy project you can do with your kids to demonstrate how potholes are made. Using a good-sized flower pot, mostly filled with potting soil, Tamp the surface down nice and flat and even, then dig a cone-shaped hole in the middle. Next, mostly fill that hole with ice. Spread the potting soil over the top of the ice cubes and pack down nice and firm. And then, you can even put a toy car on the top of it. Put the flower pot in your house and leave it overnight and voila, the next day you have a pothole. Potholes are more likely to show up in older roads and roads that don't have good drainage. Sometimes hitting them is unavoidable. If you end up like the little yellow car in the flower pot, you may be paying a visit to Sean Dezalia. Now that the spring season has sprung upon us, we see um, the whole bunch of front end damage to vehicles. We see pothole damage to whims, to wheels, um, 
to a whole bunch of different things. If they are not repaired, potholes get bigger and deeper. Vehicles driving over them add to the damage of the pavement. Patching is a necessary and ongoing job for highway departments like Salve. Once a week, we like to get out and uh, hit these potholes, unless you got an emergency one. If you got a real deep one, you got to get out there and get it, like we just did one this morning on 2nd Street. If the potholes get to be too much to handle, more drastic work is called for. Milton Ave is, is going to be replaced. Uh, oh, is right? Yeah. Uh, it's going to go in three phases beginning this year. Sooner or later, ripping it up and correcting the design problems of the road is the smoothest route to travel. Potholes can take days, weeks, often months to develop, you, depending on the uh, water and the weather. You may be already driving over next year's potholes, you just can't see them next. Um, back to you, Elena. Thank you, Larry. This is a very special time of year for students, especially for most of us here on TV Update, who are wrapping up degree programs. OCC's commencement ceremony is right around the corner, where more than 500 students will make the walk from students to alumni. Joining me today to talk about graduation and becoming alumni is Russ Corbin, the Assistant Director of Alumni Communications and Institutional Events for OCC. Good morning, Russ. Good morning, Elena. How are you doing nice today? To I'm very good, thank you. Good. We're going to get right into it. So what exactly does it take to plan a commencement ceremony? The commencement ceremony is the culmination of the academic year, not only for students, but for faculty and employees. Um, essentially, I wouldn't be lying to you, like as soon as we're done with one uh, commencement ceremony, we will be rolling in the planning phases for the next one. It usually starts with as soon as, as I said, as soon as the, the, the previous commencement is over with, we're looking at renting the same facility, we're looking at lining up the similar vendors because at that time it's very popular for other colleges to have their commencements. And then during the summer and um, fall months, we're really looking at recommendations from the previous commencement as to how we want to improve that. And then in the spring, we try to implement those necessary changes and then also ramp up our communication to students, to employees, to make sure that um, you know, they're aware of when the actual next commencement's going to be and uh, you know, how they can get involved and you know, how they can prepare. Awesome. So what should students be doing to make sure that they're prepared for the commencement? Uh, right now, the thing that we stress to them in our various communication is to check in with Grad Central at Student Central. Um, this will make sure that they are in line to graduate and they have all the necessary steps completed. Uh, once that's done, um, it may sound obvious, but we incur we, it's mandated to have regalia at commencement, so we want them to go and buy their regalia from the bookstore. But one of the most important things that I'd like to stress is as they prepare for this big day is just to get ready to have a good time. I mean, this is a very special moment for them. We want them to enjoy themselves. I've been at this for 12 years, and I can honestly say um, each year we have a Scottish pipe band lead the processional in, mm -hmm. and as soon as they hit their first note, um, I still get chills down my spine. When you look at 6,000 people in the arena and the processional is beginning, mm -hmm. it's just a very special moment and we hope that um, as many students can participate as possible. Wow, oh my goodness. So what is expected besides that of the commencement this year? Is anything really newer or different? Um, it's not new or different, but one thing that I think that our commencement brings that's unique to others is that some other colleges, their keynote speaker may be of somebody of some, of some like large stature in the community mm -hmm. or nationally. What we do is we typically bring it back to the student, and our keynote st speaker um, is, it goes through a selection process. There's a selection process on, on campus, and they are nominated to give the keynote address. So it's more of like that peer-to-peer, -peer, mm -hmm. you know, we did it, this is what we've overcome type of scenario, which we appreciate, and I think the student, students appreciate too. Oh, cool. So after students are walking the stage, what new services will be available to them as new alumni? Um, that's the thing that we want to... Actually, Russ, we didn't have time for the last okay. question. Sorry to cut you off. But I do want to thank you so much again for joining us because <laughs> we're pleasure. all looking forward to seeing what's in store for the graduates at commencement this year. Oh, OCC's commencement is scheduled for Saturday, May 16th at 1 p.m. Friends and family are more than welcome to attend at the SRC Arena. And tickets are not required. Caps and gowns are available in the Barnes & Noble's bookstore on campus. And if you have any questions, you can go to Grad Central and the Gordon Student Center. Graduation is just around the corner, but have you planned for what comes after it? Jesse Milowitz gives us some insight to the possibilities. Students all over campus are starting to prepare for graduation. But what happens after graduation? 
Some will continue on with their education with a four-year school, or even further. Others may go out and get a job. Some students are taking the matter more seriously than others. Kayla Morris has her plans all lined up. My plans after graduation are to go on to a graduate program at Niagara University for uh, MS Clinical Counseling. For those looking to get a job, there are postings on many of the bulletin boards located throughout the school. According to the Swarthmore 2014 post-graduation statistics, 72% plan to move into employment, 16% plan to go on to graduate or professional school, and the remaining 12% plan to travel. The top five cities where careers have begun over the past decade are Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., New York, and Boston. Almost half of grads moving into employment will go into a field for profit. About one-fifth of them will go into a government job, and the rest a nonprofit job. Almost half of seniors who graduate will go on to get their Ph.D. The top graduate fields are humanities and math and physical sciences, covering a whopping 68%. The most desired jobs, according to U.S. News, aren't actually in healthcare. They're in technology. Jesse Milowitz on TV Update. If you're thinking about transferring to a different school, be sure to stop by the Transfer Center in the Gordon Building. Coming up in sports, Brandon Curtis tells us how the OCC women's lacrosse team is getting fired up for the postseason. And sports reporter Keith McDowell steps into the ring with a man that's making a difference for our communities at rescue. I'm Jim Spagnola. I am a percussionist. I did a lot of marching band and a lot of percussion ensemble in high school, and I decided to audition here as one of my schools out of high school. The new building is a far cry better than where we were before. The percussion room was about a third of the size of this room, and it also doubled as half the storage we had had access to. The percussion studio has a very strong bond between members, and it's a great program to be a part of. The summer after I graduated from OCC, I came back because there was an EOP program um, taking students who had just come out of high school and kind of transitioning them into college life. The students lived in the dorms and then they went to classes and then got tutoring. So even after I graduated, I was able to come back and still be involved and you know help the next class of students be successful. Because even when I went to school afterwards, when I went on for the bachelor's and for the master's, you don't you really don't find like as much support anywhere else as you do at OCC. I am in the choir. I'm in the concert choir and OCC singers. And Dr. Dari is a great, great, great conductor. He really wants to know you and your personality, where you come from. He just really cares about us and it shows. As soon as I joined the choir, I was talking to people at the auditions. People here, they're not afraid to say like, hi, my name is, and really get to know you. OCC is like your second home. I really feel like I have a family here. It's that time again, finals! And after finals, it's Christmas! But before Christmas, it's Christmas shopping! We don't have time to go somewhere far away to do our Christmas shopping, but not to worry, you have the OCC Barnes & Noble College Bookstore! Books aren't the only thing you can find here. In fact, there's a gift for everyone. From beautiful warm hoodies of all sizes, to new backpacks, shirts of all colors, Christmas gifts, and even supplies for next semester. So don't be a Scrooge this Christmas. Be the life of the holidays. Come down to the OCC Bookstore located in the Whitney Atrium. Open normal business hours. See website for details. Welcome back. I'm Brandon Curtis with your sports update. For troubled Central New York kids, the boxing ring can sometimes be a safe haven. On TV's Keith McDowell has more. Ray Rinaldi has been a leader here in the Syracuse community for over five decades. He's a boxing trainer, a mentor, and most importantly, a friend. His foundation has been helping at-risk youths in the Syracuse area for decades, and the impact is undeniable. Not only does the North and West Area Athletic and Education Centers provide world-class training in boxing, but they also offer GED classes, drug and alcohol counseling, and many other services aimed at helping at-risk youths. The program's leaders understand where these kids are coming from. They know that many come from broken homes and live in poverty-ridden communities. They understand life is very tough for a lot of these youngsters. What's truly amazing to see is the level of communication between coach and student. They always seem to maintain eye contact. When the coach is talking, the students are actively listening. 
Coach Garcia seems to have no difficulty keeping the kids focused and active. He uses a mixture of English and Spanish when addressing the class so that everyone can understand. Both of the Rinaldi gyms can be found in notoriously tough neighborhoods. The first on Pond Street in the city's north side, and the second across from Fowler High School on the west side of Syracuse. Kids find their way into the gyms for a variety of different reasons. Some are sent from school or truancy officers, others from higher authorities such as police or probation officers, and plenty of the kids just happen to wander in. The kids learn respect and discipline right from the start. They also sometimes learn that they aren't quite as tough as they originally thought. I'm sweeping and mopping and then he asked me if I wanted to box, so I uh, started training with him and got in the ring. A little scary, but learned a lot of things. Taught me uh, discipline, respect, and all that. Despite where these kids have come from, with the help of Ray's trainers, they'll be armed for success. If you ask Ray Rinaldi what kind of kids he trains at his gym, he'll tell you doctors and lawyers. For On TV Update, I'm Keith McDowell. For more information, visit RaceKids.com, or better yet, stop into one of the gyms and see for yourself what they are all about. The OCC women's softball team is determined to make a run to the national title game. Emmanuel Henderson went out to see how the team is preparing for postseason play. Here at sophomore night, the Lady Lazer softball team is giving a great example of why they're dominating teams. Ranked first in their conference with a 22-12 record and only giving up two and a half runs. The women's laser softball team has had a very tough season this year, but have consistently found their way back to the top of the Mid-State Athletic Conference, beating teams by eight runs and giving other opponents a tough outing. The Lasers are dedicated and working hard to get back to national. Sophomore left fielder Leah Newell gives us a little insight on how the team bounces back from a loss. Um, we spend a lot of time in the gym and we do a lot of conditioning, a lot of core work and a lot of work on batting in the gym. That's a big thing, hitting um, off tees and stuff like that. Now the team's main goal is to go to nationals and get back to another national championship. Uh, my team's major goal for this season would probably be um, to make it to nationals. Um, we talked about it a lot and that's how we, we always remind ourselves that's where we want to end up. The team is led by former Onondaga graduate and All-American pitcher Kristen Nichols, who keeps the team motivated with various tips, strategies, and practices. Kristen was appointed head softball coach in September of 2011. In her three seasons as head coach, she has a compiled record of 77 and 30, while producing six all-region standouts, along with six Mid-State Athletic All-Conference players. Expect Nichols and the Lasers to get back to the Mid-State Championship and Nationals. For On TV Update, I'm Emmanuel Henderson. <laughs> Lasers begin a daytime doubleheader on the road today at 3 p.m. against Jefferson Community College. They've done it again. The nationally ranked Onondaga men's lacrosse team won their 11th consecutive regional championship Sunday. And for the Lasers, that's just the icing on top of a record-breaking season. Winning over 100 straight games, the men's lacrosse team holds the title for most consecutive wins across all NJCAA, AA sports, and divisions. The OCC women's lacrosse season is winding down. The regular season, that is. The Lady Lasers have posted a 12-1 overall record to this point, a record that has them ranked second in the nation. Since coming off of a tough loss at the hands of Monroe Community College, the Lasers have rattled off four straight wins, all in convincing fashion, having outscored their opponents 66-21. The season is far from over, however, as Tom McDonald's squad is hard at work preparing for a potential NJCAA title bid. Correct, but we want to do it even better. And I think, uh, you know, the old adage is, is offense wins games, but defense wins championships. So I would say we definitely need to uh, continue to improve our defense here over the next two weeks. Yeah. So the Lasers are back in action tomorrow at 2.30 against Jefferson Community College. We also have a really busy weekend in sports, you know, uh, Pacquiao, Mayweather, as well as NHL playoff hockey, NBA basketball. What do you got your eyes on? Um, you know, I had Pacquiao May Mayweather fight. I think that's the biggest one of the weekend. Uh, I think Pacquiao's going to take it from him. I'm hoping so, too. Me, too. And I'm just going to smile and pretend like I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Downtown Syracuse has been making a comeback over the past few years with new businesses emerging. The future looks promising. 
Charles Curran returns with his second part of the series on the revitalizations of downtown Syracuse. That's next. I'm a human services major um, with a concentration in social work. I love my major because it is giving me the skills and abilities and knowledge to be able to help people in crisis. The academics are great. I, they're challenging. Choir is great because it, you can you are with music majors and non-music majors, and we all come together to make music. Dr. Rodari is very good at making you feel listened to, and he obviously cares. He is interested in you, not just as a student, but you as a human being. The OCC Bistro is a full-service dining area operated by Onondaga's culinary students. Lunch is served every Thursday. Each student gets hands-on experience working every restaurant position from chef to host. With an elegant dining room and a professional culinary kitchen, the Bistro provides an excellent atmosphere for OCC students to perfect their skills. Why not visit us next Thursday for lunch? The OCC Bistro in the Gordon Building next to Starbucks. I love the, living in the rest halls. It's a great place to meet new people. Um, we can all get together either in our suites or in the lounge and watch TV, have movie nights, make popcorn, all get together. Um, it's like a family away from home. Each dorm has their own laundry room. You can make a lot of new friends walking to and from class. Definitely if you're gonna choose Onondaga to go to school at, you gotta live in the dorm. community calendar. If you're looking for something to do with the family, the Syracuse Chiefs are playing tonight at the NBT Bank Stadium. The game starts at 7 p.m. Ticket prices vary. Saturday, the OCC Percussion Ensemble will be taking part in the celebration of the arts. The ensemble will be dazzling audience with a wide variety of instruments. Show your support by attending at St. David's Episcopal Church. The show starts at 8 p.m. On Sunday, Armory Square Playwrights presents a reading of new short plays by CNY Playwrights. The event is from 1 to 3 p.m. and will include the staged reading of four new short plays. The event will be held at CNY Jazz Central. Admission is $7 and 5 for students and seniors. Also on Sunday, there's the Mountain Goat Run at Clinton Square. The event features a kids run, a 3K, and a 10 mile run. The first rate starts at 9 a.m. Pre-registration is required to participate. Register today at mountaingoatrun.com. Welcome back. The revitalization of downtown Syracuse is energized with more shops and residential living space. Armory Square and the surrounding neighborhood is growing with occupancy and development. On TV reporter Charles Curran takes us downtown into the action. The revitalization of downtown Syracuse has been going on for a few years now. Armory Square in the surrounding neighborhood is growing with both business and residential. Restaurant owner Methan Chutin Taranon recently purchased the historic Onondaga Music Building. After 21 years of success in Armory Square, Methan continues his investment in the downtown community. Uh, it's sitting right here for a while, you know, uh, in waiting for the new owner. Everybody keep coming in and start a bit on the, on the, on the building and nobody been success and we just like the building, it's close to us, and when the chance has come, we just snap it, and that's it. And we saw a lot of potential. Downtown Syracuse has received an infusion of money over the past several years from both local and state government. They believe in Syracuse and its potential to grow, to attract people, and create business. I'm standing in front of the historic Onondaga Music Building. It is located at 214 West Jefferson Street. This building is currently undergoing a $3.9 million renovation. It is a prime example of the revitalization of downtown Syracuse. By year's end, this historic building will contain 21 luxury apartments on the fourth, third, and second floors, and on the first floor will contain dining and retail establishment. The renovation of this building represents Syracuse's past, present, and future. As the revitalization continues, with construction and development in full force, Richard DeVito of Paramount Realty explains why. Basically it's a change in the demographic 
nationally. This is a trend that's happening everywhere in the country right now. Younger people really want to be in a more vibrant location and exciting place and they want to be in an area where they can have community. So places like Armory Square and downtown Syracuse offer that. They offer a place where people can gather, they can offer a place for people to live and work and shop all at once. Charles Curran on TV Update. As downtown continues to grow, residents and businesses owners take pride in the community. The Onondaga Music Building will re be renamed 214th and is expected to be begin leasing by September. Every other Wednesday, the American Sign Language Club meets in room 104 of Mawinney Hall. They create an environment where students of all kinds are welcome to participate and learn about deaf culture. On TV Updates, Nicole Martino tells us about the club's efforts to reach out to the community. Though this semester is wrapping up fairly quickly, the American Sign Language, or ASL Club, is still buzzing with activity. Founded only a year ago, it's astonishing how much they've done in such a short time. Club Vice President Christine Mansfield, Secretary Jessica Whitehouse, and President Chelsea Neves recall when DJ Wawa visited, a rapper who puts a unique twist on the genre. He signs in ASL, but he does it to a hip hop beat. He spreads awareness in the music industry that deaf people can also be musicians and performers. They just have a different way of expressing themselves. The ASL club has its own goals for spreading awareness of deaf individuals, starting at the academic level. We have an ASL degree here at OCC and the club wants to spread awareness of deaf culture, of American Sign Language, provide exposure to deaf individuals, um, help people become successful, and let the community know that we're here. Part of increasing exposure to deaf members of the community are regular coffee socials held across the area in places like Panera Bread. The ASL club is always open to new members who are looking to improve their signing skills or who simply want to gain a better understanding of the deaf community here in central New York. Reporting from Mawinney Hall, I'm Nicole Martino on TV Update. The ASL Club will be attending the spring party on the quad. Stop by their table on Wednesday the 6th between 10 and 2. Many students tend to pack on some unwanted pounds during their time at college. The phrase freshman 15 is all too familiar, but here at OCC, the Southwest YMCA has many services that can help students stay in shape. The Southwest Area YMCA is a 4,000 square foot fitness facility equipped with free weights, strength training machines, group exercise rooms, a 200 meter indoor track, and an array of cardio machines from treadmills to stationary bikes. The Y even offers health services that go beyond just traditional physical fitness that is free for all students. We have our personal coaching, so personal coaching is a free program that is, I wouldn't say it's just like personal training because the exercise portion isn't so specific to the client or the member, but you have healthy eating components in there, you know, exercise components in there, and then also that life coaching portion where we're trying to get to the root of maybe that healthy bad habit. Membership is free for the students here at the Y. You just have to fill out one of these, these forms and bring your student ID every time you come. With the YMCA being open throughout the day, it gives students the perfect opportunity to get a workout in between classes. I think uh, it's definitely convenient to students. I mean, after a class, if you have a couple classes throughout the day, I mean, in the middle of your breaks, you can always stop by the Y and get a little 45 minute hour workout in if you have to. The feature the YMCA offers this year is the Student for All membership. This allows students to sign up each semester, get a YMC card, and visit any of the five locations in the Syracuse area. Well, it's motorcycle season and they've already started coming out. On TV Updates, John Einick has some tips on what riders should do to stay safe. When you're riding a motorcycle, the most important part of your
When you're riding a motorcycle, the most important part of your body to protect is your head. New York State requires you wear a helmet at all times. Even though other places like Florida and Maine don't require you to wear a helmet, you should always wear a DOT approved helmet. You can tell the difference between an approved helmet and a non-approved helmet by this stamp on the back. It will be in large letters to say DOT. If it doesn't say DOT, don't wear it. Although a helmet is important, when you're on a bike, your whole body is exposed and you should have the right equipment for a safe ride. Protective gear should include both a helmet, uh, goggles, if you don't have a, a face mask on your helmet itself, you want to make sure you have some type of eye protection. Leather jacket. That a lot of riders don't like to wear the leather jackets because of the stiffness and the sun. Another option is nylon. Unlike leather, it's more lightweight and more flexible and a breeze better to keep you cooler. These jackets have removable shoulder pads, elbow pads, and back guards made of this lightweight Kevlar material for extra protection in the jacket. In Syracuse, I'm John Einish for On TV Update. A motorcycle isn't easy to see coming down the road like a car or a truck. Drivers should always be aware of them. Larry Berg is back now with the weekend weather forecast. Larry, how's it looking? Well, what can I say? It's going to be a great weekend for golfing or raking the lawn or washing the car, pretty much whatever you want to do outside. The uh, weekend forecast looks like this. Today's clouds that are going to be building in this afternoon are going to disappear and leave us with two days of sunshine and highs in the low 70s. Get out there and do something, people. God only knows when this will happen again. Carpe weekend. I'm going to have to bring my puppy to the dog park. Yeah, I'm going to have to, oh have to catch 18 after this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of our final newscast of the semester. We would like to thank all of our great reporters and production staff. It's been a great ride and a very special thanks to Mark Ballard and Greg Endler for all of their support behind the scenes. We'd also like to thank our instructors, Tammy Palmer and Laura Bailey, for everything they've taught us this past semester. And Without their help, none of this would ever be possible. Have a great weekend, and thanks for watching.